In the following module, we will discuss adjusting entries. Recall from Chapter 3 that adjusting entries are performed at the end of the accounting period to convert the unadjusted trial balance to the adjusted trial balance. It is necessary to perform adjusting entries to ensure accurate reporting of both income statement and balance sheet accounts. The use of accrual accounting creates the need for adjusting entries because rather than recording revenues when cash is received and expenses when cash is paid, we instead record revenues when the earnings process is complete and match the expenses that help generate those revenues in the same period. Thus, accrual accounting creates timing differences between the realization of cash receipts and the recognition of revenue as earned, as well as timing differences between the realization of cash payments and the recognition of an expense being incurred. Adjusting entries are performed to complete the accrual accounting process and help ensure that revenue and expense recognition occurs in the correct period. There are four types of adjusting entries that firms must consider at the end of each accounting period. The first adjusting entry converts assets to expenses. This type of entry is needed when cash is paid prior to an expense being incurred and involves a debit to an expense account and a credit to an asset account. Recording this type of adjusting entry helps to ensure that asset account balances reported on the balance sheet are not overstated. It also helps ensure that expenses recorded on the income statement are not understated. If this adjusting entry is not made, net income would be overstated. The second adjusting entry converts liabilities to revenue. This entry is necessary when cash is received prior to the revenue being earned. This entry involves a debit to a liability account and a credit to a revenue account. Recording this type of adjusting entry helps ensure that liability account balances reported on the balance sheet are not overstated. It also helps ensure that revenues recorded on the income statement are not understated. Consequently, if this adjusting entry is not made, net income is understated. The third adjusting entry accrues unpaid expenses. This entry is necessary when an expense has been incurred, but the company has yet to fulfill their commitment related to this expense. Often this unfulfilled commitment represents a liability, i.e. accrued interest on a loan. But it could also involve an equity account, i.e. restricted stock or stock options. This entry therefore involves a debit to an expense account and a credit to either a liability account or an equity account. Recording this type of adjusting entry helps ensure that expenses are recorded on the income statement are not understated. Failure to make this adjusting entry will thus overstate net income. The fourth and final adjusting entry accrues uncollected revenue. This entry results from revenue being earned before cash is received. The entry generally involves a debit to an asset account and a credit to a revenue account. Recording this type of adjusting entry helps to ensure that revenues recorded on the income statement are not understated, which would result in understated net income. Let's review and bring it all together. Adjusting entries are performed at the end of the reporting period to allow firms to prepare an adjusted trial balance. There are four types of adjusting entries. The first entry converts assets to expenses and is designed to make sure net income is not overstated. The second entry converts liabilities to revenue accounts and is designed to make sure net income is not understated. The third entry accrues unpaid expenses which acts to make sure that net income is not overstated. And the fourth and final entry accrues uncollected revenue, which helps ensure that net income is not understated. In the next few modules, we will provide examples of each type of adjusting entry.